Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to talk about gardenia season. Uh, this is the uh, beginning of the gardenias blooming in my area. I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. And it's usually around late May uh, into June when the uh, gardenias kind of go into uh, what we would call peak bloom. A lot of them have now been bred to uh, have some residual flowers during the summer and fall, including this one right here called Scent Amazing. Uh, this is a, a really compact growing variety. It only reaches maybe two to three feet in height or maintainable at two to three feet in height, I should say, by two to three feet in width. It has the single flowers and some people like uh, just the traditional double flowers, but these single flowering varieties tend to really bloom very heavily and uh, be more likely to give you additional flowers uh, during the growing season. Uh, the Probably the most popular double flowering varieties uh, are number one is ra uh, Gardenia radicans, which is a low growing variety. It only reaches about a foot, foot and a half in height, but gets three, four feet in width uh, if you let it. Great foundation plant. Frost proof gardenia, which gets maybe three to four feet in height, is super, super popular. I probably grew between 50 and 100,000 of those things while I was in the nursery business. Uh, and it has, a, it has a double flower on it. Um, Scent Amazing uh, and one called Jubilation are good replacements for that one because they've been bred to stay a little more compact, a little less floppy, and um, are more likely, again, to give you residual flowers. We have a variety called August Beauty that can get head high or higher. It's been around forever. Beautiful double flowers on it. Uh, amongst the hardy, th those are the hardiest of the varieties to grow. Uh, in my zone seven area, there are more tropical gardenias that bloom pretty much all summer long. They're just not hardy up here in my area. They have very large leaves and very large flowers. I did a tour video recently that had one of those old fashioned gardenias on it, but they had put it up against the house to protect it from the cold. One thing about, um, a few things about just cultural um, things with gardenias, they don't like, um, th they get root rot very easily and I have clay soils in my area so I do mound gardenias up when I plant them an inch or two above the uh, grade uh, when they're going in the ground that way I don't end up over watering them um, that can also lead me to underwater them a little bit um, and so you got to be careful with that but I can't reverse over watering if that makes any sense if the plants in the ground and I over water it and the roots start to rot I can't reverse that if I have it mounded up and it gets a little dry, I can, I can reverse that with, uh, with water. Uh, a lot of times, uh, this time of year, when they start to flower, you'll see some yellow leaves down in the center of the plant, and this one has a few on it. That's actually where the plant decided it's going to flower no matter what, um, and uh, it will lose leaves to do that if it's on the dry side. So that's what you're seeing, um, is that it got, um, it got dry while it was setting the flower buds. Another thing is white flies are a major issue on gardenias. Uh, I've got one that we're gonna walk over to and look at in just a second that is um, in a more open area. This one's kind of up against the foundation uh, in an area that's not gonna get a lot of wind movement on it. It's gonna be more likely to have white flies on it, just is. Uh, the one that I have out further in the yard, I think is a, in a better place to uh, just keep a little breeze on it. And usually that keeps the uh, white flies down a little more. So let's walk over and I'll show you one I'm super excited about. Okay. This is Diamond Spire Gardenia. Uh, this one's uh, from the Southern Living Plant Collection. So it was sent amazing uh, over there. But this one um, was bred to be have a columnar habit, an upright, narrow habit. It's completely different. The foliage is different. The growth habit is different. Um, it's coming to almost full flower. It's got some... Uh, it's got lots of buds uh, left to open on it, so it's not quite in full flower. Just a beautiful variety. I love the foliage on this plant. It's almost um, um, really dark green, shiny. Uh, and again, the habit is super, super unique. Um, Buddy Lee uh, is the person who uh, introduced this one, same person who did uh, Encore Azaleas. Uh, I think this one is really going to be uh, super, super popular in a trade. It's new uh, this year if you can find it, but this one's called Diamond Spire. Sure. Now on this boat and we all know 
Gardenias are definitely amongst uh, many, many people's favorite uh, plants. The fragrance is amazing. The evergreen, shiny foliage uh, is amazing. They're kind of good, tidy, ornamental plants uh, when they're behaving, when they don't have you know, insect issues or you know, issues related to uh, overwatering or underwatering. They're actually just pretty tidy little uh, low maintenance plants. I have to be completely honest, um, in all the years of, of growing plants and selling plants in a retail setting, these are almost overwhelming to me. Uh, highly, highly perfumed plants are not necessarily my favorite, but I can understand why it is many, many people's favorites. I've just ridden in a uh, box truck before with about a uh, thousand of these in the back of the truck in full bloom <laughs> and just been almost overwhelmed uh, by them. So. I call this time of year gardenia season. Uh, what is your favorite season of the year? Is it gardenia season? Uh, viburnum season's kind of already happened. I think a lot of people's favorite would be hydrangea season. You know, all the hydrangeas are coming into bloom. Uh, here in the south, we'll have crepe myrtle season uh, in a few weeks. Uh, what's your favorite uh, season of the year? Uh, thank you guys very much for watching uh, my videos. And uh, I post lots of photos of the uh, of the plants in my yard that, as they're coming into flower. So follow me over on Instagram as well. Uh, and thanks for following along with uh, my landscape progress in Raleigh, North Carolina.